again here today hope you're all well um back on how to make a simple journal again um for those of you um especially the beginners um and today um i want to talk about the three s's which is stamping stenciling and sewing so those are the three things i want to cover today in the episode so what i thought i would do is is just show you some of the things that we need to consider when you um looking at your pages now it's it's a lot of it is to do with preparing your pages and these are the things you need to do before you actually stitch it into your um cover your, into your signature so um one of the things i use a lot of are stencils so yeah i've got a couple of stencils this one I use a lot when I um, want to um, highlight certain areas and I don't just want a blank page, but I'm sort of texturing it up a bit. This is a cheap stencil I got on eBay for, I think, a quid. Um, I have no idea where it comes from. It was a long time ago, but it's, it looks like cobbles, really. So um, I use this a lot and I stamp over this as well. So this is one of the, the sort of texture stencils that you could use um, another one i use a lot and both of these come from the tim holtz collection this is um i think the numbers th s075 tim holtz s075 um, this is like a climbing rose i think it's called a rose stencil by tim holtz and i might use a piece of it or other pieces on the edges on the middle or whatever but stenciling um using this one i use quite often as well so it's it's worthwhile to invest in a couple of stencils you don't need to have tim holt stencils um i've only got two uh, but i found a lot of far more reasonable stencils um that come from china um and even aliexpress if you buy from there um you can also make your own stencils so you know you can draw and create your own so there's that as well um this one i use this is a lovely one because it's got um scroll bits at the top and it's got this sort of um moroccan type theme at the bottom and i use either one of these so this is like a two in one this is also a tim holt stencil and i'm trying to see the code for you it's thmm3 so that's what this one is and i use this one a lot as well all right so those are the stencils and they add lovely dimension to pages it just takes especially when you've got a, a blank page like um this kind of page here so this is one of the tea dyed papers that we um we have and if I had to show you how I do that, I use um, this antique linen distress ink, um, but you can use any ink that you like, um, antique um, rose, you can use vintage photo or whatever you works for you. I like this one because it's not too dark and that's just how I roll. So everybody's different with this so what i do is i use these i can't emphasize how useful these are you can get these um also on ebay or somewhere i'm sure in at the um, pound shop or the dollar store something like that you can get these really cheap and the reason why sorry i prefer to use these as opposed to these kind of dobber things is you get far more detail with this compared to this so um let's just sh show you how i would do this so if i was to place this and i wanted to have a scroll coming down at the corner there then what i would do is and i suggest that you do take the page out so for you to know where the page goes back in just turn the rest at an angle because you know that has happened to me many times where i've taken a page out and now i don't know where it goes back in so on this side we want a nice flat surface and um, this table's full of things i want to show you um we want to just line it put it where you want it so rub your brush on your ink pad like that and then just uh, make slow circle motions make sure you hold the bits of the stencil down you don't want any of them to brush up 
and just keep um, doing light movements in circles around the area that you want to stencil. So that's all we have to do with that. All right, so if you lift that up, if you can see that, we've got a lovely, um, very light scrolled bit on the page there. So that's, I think is really lovely. If you wanted to do a different type of a one, I'll show you on the other side of this page how I do that. Um, so say for example, I would like um, that rose there. Then I would just put it where I want it. So we want to have it something like that. Um, yeah, I think so. Um, is that how I want it? Yeah, I'm going to have it like that. Again, hold this down. And just do your slow, slow motion. Um, over the areas lightly now because of these brushes and um, they have such fine little bristles it gets into the areas a hell of a lot better than a dauber does so that's I, I do see a very big difference this is a much cleaner finish and I really like this okay so um, once you take that up you can see you've got a beautiful rose across the corner there. So hopefully you can see that. All right, so stencils, can't say enough about them. Um, so now we know where we, we're going. We can put that page back where it belongs and it can go back into the pile here. Um, so put in some stencil marks as you go. Let's find another one. Um, I like these pages, so again, take it out. Uh, put that in at an angle so you know where it goes. I uh, just wanted to show you how it, how the um, I use this one. So what I do here is um, I look for areas that I want to use. So I'm going to do this a little bit like that over there, not too dark. Then I might look at a bit over here. Um, and then I might do a burst again up here. Like that. Um, and this is ever so light. So I hope you can see. It just gives a little bit of a dimension it looks like a bit of a dragon scale, lizard scales, really. All right, so that's another thing you can do. And then you can bring stamping into that. Now, um, the kind of st um, ink you want to use for that would be archival ink. This is a permanent waterproof ink. This one's called potting soil. I like that rather than black. I don't use black for anything. So... Um, what I do here is open that up. I've just got a little bit of text on here. Um, so what I do is I just press the top two corners down like that with my fingers. And I just ever so lightly touch it around, like really lightly. I, ho I hope you can see that. Right, so that's another thing you can do. Um, just to give some dimension to an otherwise plain page. Um, that could be a nice background for other things you want to do for your pages. All right, so play around with the stencils and the stamps. And uh, there are other things you can do. You might want to stamp onto a page or onto um, some other paper, you know. So say, for example, I've got a butterfly stamp here. Again, you want to use your archival ink. Um, don't be afraid. You can even use bits of calico. This is always lovely to stamp onto fabric and then sew that onto a piece of material. And we're going to talk about sewing today. So 
Let's make sure that's stuck on there properly. This is quite a big stamp um, for this. So maybe it wasn't the best one to use. Um, oh, and before I do that, so let me, sorry, I'm messing you around here. Work out first of all, oops, the size of the actual stamp first so that you can tear the fabric to size. So let's do that. So we want it that way and we want it a little about up here. So I, I like to tear it. It's not going to let me because that was too much of a small nip. So, uh, so we're going to have to do it a bit more. Give me a better grasp. Tear it like that because it gets a nice finish. So pull these bits off. And muslin's great for this. All right, so there you've got a lovely piece there. And now you are best positioned. And we'll take the page away, we'll do it straight on to this, get a nice firm surface. You want it as firm as possible so that it's going to stamp and um, be in the middle and come out as clear as possible. So we want to press it into the archival ink. Um, hopefully that's everywhere. And then you want to place that as central as possible. And then um, press that as hard as you can. Okay, there we have a beautiful butterfly. Look at that. All right, so that's really lovely. And I'll show you how you can use that on a pocket in a minute. So um, play around with your stamps. I've got another little one I use quite a lot. I'm going to show you. Um, again, it's a butterfly, but I've got a bee somewhere, but I'm just going to use the butterfly. This is a butterfly. Um, again, on fabric. We'll just measure that guesstimate <laughs> jody did some of these for me she gifted me some bees which i love jody i love the way the fabric came out really lovely i think they're over here or oh, did i take them out i think i've moved them yeah but i used one this morning and it was just Oh, heavenly. I love the way your fabric comes out, Jody. I don't know if you tea dyed it or not. But it's not as cream as this. It's browner. So you can play around with all of these things. You've seen me do the tea dyeing um, tutorial. So, I mean, sky's the limit with that. Right, so we've got a, a tiny little splotch here of, of um, muslin. And I just want to put that on there again. There we've got a little um, butterfly and that looks so pretty as a little um, detail on a pocket or, or anything that you want to, even a tag, anything like that. And we'll do pockets and tags, that will be the next one. All right, so let's hang on to those for the moment. Um, so don't forget archival ink for stamping. Abby, you just banged my tripod. Right, so we are done with that. Let's just move that out the way. Right, so um, we've talked about the stamping. We've had a little chat about the stenciling. Don't be afraid to stamp onto your pages as well. Okay, I've got um, lots and lots of different kinds of stamps. This came from a magazine. So this wasn't even something that I bought. I got it for free. So don't be afraid to um, look for, um, you know, things that come with magazines for free. <laughs> oh my God, that was like really stuck on there. Okay, so here we've got a beautiful um, flower um, stamp. And that should fit on there, or maybe not. I'll need to get my other block. And excuse the state of it, it's old. <laughs> and so we'll just put that in the middle there and um, then what we can do is I'll just put those away 
Um, again, use your archival ink. And you can use this to stamp on the side of a page. So that, I love the clear blocks because you can see everything. Right, so there we go. Let's just put that in there. Okay, so again, a lovely play around with the stamps. It adds so much dimension and you can stamp onto fabric, you can stamp onto paper, you can do quite a lot with that. So don't be afraid to do that. Um, right, so that is the stamping side of things. Go and have a play around. When I come, when you come and see me again, I will have done some more on that for you. Now, um, the last thing I want to talk about is just give you some pointers. There are a lot of people who I've heard from that have said they've got a sewing machine, but they're dead scared to use it. They're not sure about um, what they can do with it um, and a whole lot of things. They're not experienced sewers. You don't need to be an experienced seamstress to work with paper. I can tell you sewing on paper um, as a person who has been a seamstress is a lot easier than working with fabric. Um, so you've just got to start with the basics and go from there. So that's what we're going to do today. I want to talk through a couple of things you can do with your sewing machine. Now one of the things that you can do, and we're going to start basic basic here, is with journal cards. If you want to back your journal cards, I'm going to take a basic square and I'm going to start right there and show you how to do that. So just taking one of these collage, um, calico collage cards. You can do this with anything. It can come from a book. It can come from anywhere. So we're just going to take one of these here. I'm just um, cutting it off. There we've got a card. And I want to put it onto some kind of um, other paper or other card. Um, here's a good example of using different color inks with um, your stencils as well. So don't be afraid to um, venture out of that area as well. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm a fan of uh, recycling packaging, as you know. So I'm going to put it onto this card, which has a lovely tea stained um, color on the back. Abby, what is wrong with you? No, no. All right, so. So what we'll do is we just, I take a glue stick for this. You can take, um, I have had people say to me, oh, it's going to ruin your machine um, using a glue stick and stitching on it. Well, it has not. And I don't have a fancy machine. I've got a singer and I'll show you what it is. If I move this, so brace yourself. Um, I have a singer. It's a basic Singham sewing machine. You can see um, it just has a couple of stitches here. It's got a straight stitch, zigzag, and very few others, and that's it. And that's all that you need, as far as I'm concerned. You get um, lots of other uh, fancy um, um, stitches that you can use, but to start off with, there's nothing wrong with just having a basic sewing machine. There's nothing wrong with that at all. I'm back. Okay, so we have got this onto a piece of card like that and just cut it right around close to the edge of your image. Okay, so there we've got um, this right here. So it's just a piece of recycled board um, card and we've got an image on there. It gives us a nice sturdy tag or card. Now, what I want to do is I just want to move some of these things out the way and bring in my sewing machine. If you have a look over here on this machine, you can see that... Um, if you set your stitch to three, that's an average um, stitch length, really. It's on straight stitching there. 
if I move it that way, the stitch length is going to be shorter. And if I move it that way, it's going to be longer. As an average, I use three. That's about a standard straight stitch, you know, the standard straight stitch like that. If I want to do zigzag, I move it to one and a half. So that's what it is for my machine. And machines are different. You just need to work out what's best for you. So with a straight stitch, we're going to have that on three. We're going to have that on straight stitching. And we are going to stitch a straight line. So let's do that. So we put down the foot. Um, um, and I'll turn it on. And what I'm going to do is... I'm just going to move uh, the, the needle into the paper and very slowly you just run the machine as, as straight using this as a guide or something here as a guide that you can just keep it on and just very slowly go almost to the end. So that's what you need to do there. Then you're going to leave the needle in, you're going to lift up the foot turn it around with the needle still in, put the foot down and you're going to sew another row. Do it as slowly as you can possibly tolerate, you know, as, or should I say, as fast as you can tolerate. So that's all you need to do with that. Go straight around. Now, if you want to get clever and you're feeling confident with all the straight stitching and you want to get add something in, which I like to do on my things, I just lift the needle up out of your paper. I am now going to turn this to one and a half. So in between those two, I'm going to move this to the zigzag, just the start of the zigzag so that's just there it's not at the really wide bit the further you go along the wider the zigzag goes now what will happen is with the needle up i can press gently and it will do little zigzags and when i stop bring the needle up again move this back to three move this back to the straight stitching and carry on again Put your needle in. I'm pressing the back stitch just to uh, get my needle to where I want it because it sort of moves the needle. All right, so now when I come to the end, I pull the threads out so that we don't sew them and make a big mess at the back of your card. And we're going to go again straight. All right, leave your needle in turn it around and go three or four stitches down where you, over where you started. That will just make sure it doesn't unravel. Lift up the, the foot of the machine, pull out uh, the two threads and then get a, a sharp pair of scissors and trim off those threads, top and bottom, start and the finishing points like that. Okay, so there you can see what we've done, straight stitching, like that, and then a little bit of zigzag. It just gives it a bit of character. All right, so what I want you to do is practice just the straight stitching for um, on anything that you want to, like your tags and your journal cards or anything like this, or even pages. I'm going to show you in a minute how to do it on a page. Once you're comfortable with that, add in a little bit of zigzag. That would be the start and the end of your sewing. And the more you try this, the more you'll get better at it. And I'm going to show you two things that you can do just with a straight stitch and the zigzag. The first is I'm going to take a page and I'm going to sew right down the side again. All right, so there we've got one of those. So now what I want to do is... Um, I'm going to take one of these pages that we did and I'm going to just sew a straight stitch down there, do a bit of a zigzag and straight again. All right, it just gives this a bit of something different. So I'm going to put it, the foot on the edge of the paper there and that's going to be my guide to keep going right the way down. So put the needle into the paper start with a little back stitch so that means press this here 
um, and go back before you go forward. Right, and then slowly just go all the way down to, to your part where you feel right. Over here, I would like to do a bit of a zigzag. So again, I'm going to turn this just to um, halfway in the zigzags there, like that. I'm going to turn this to one and a half, which is making it the stitch smaller, so it'll be a narrow zigzag. I'm going to do a couple of zigzags. Remember, the needle must be up every time you change between zigzag and straight. Straight stitch, three, carry on down there. Get to the end, do a little back stitch, just so it doesn't unravel. Pull it out, and you can cut that off. Okay, so look, now we've added a little bit of interest to the page again. And you can see the subtle uh, stenciling and stamping I've added on there. We haven't put any detail on there yet. We've just got the page ready before we stitch it into the signature. So that's what we're doing there. These are just little tips to give you an idea. All right, so there we go. That's the one. So you're going to try some journal cards, stitch around some tags. So around tags, just plain like that. Um, that would be great. Um, stitch around anything. Get used to the stitching. Don't be afraid. Now, the other thing you can do is, still with the straight stitching, and to take the butterfly that we did earlier. So I'm going to show you now how we can incorporate that and make it into a little pocket. So here I've got a, a piece of blue um, paper, and I'm going to stitch around the edge of that butterfly there, and then we've got a very decorative um, pocket, which would look really lovely. Okay, so all we need to do there, this, of course you don't have to cut that straight either. There are all sorts of ways you can do that. Tear it, zigzag scissors, all sorts of pattern scissors. So what I'm going to do is here, I'm going to just use some press stick. Um, not for the whole thing, I'm going to just do this in the middle of my butterfly. Um, and then that's just going to hold it onto my pocket. So I'm going to try and get this centralized before I press it down. Okay. Now it's not the greatest, but it's going to hold it in place. I don't want to put the, um, nearly, nearly said WD-40, not WD-40. <laughs> That's a, a lubricating spray. Um, for the sliding door and stuff. Um, what's this stuff called? Three in one. So we're not going to use that. So I've got, again, you want to go close to the edge here uh, as possible, but not too close. So you want to be like um, three or four millimeters away from the edge. All right, now you can zigzag it or you can straight stitch it. I'm going to straight stitch it because I want you to practice your straight stitching. So choose a, um, on the machine, you've got these lines here on, this, on the sewing plate. Choose one of those as a guide or take a piece of uh, washi tape and put it there as a guide if that's going to help you. All right, so go slowly, slowly as whatever slowly is for you. All right, just take your time. Keep the needle in when you're turning at corners. All right, and then again, you can go that slowly if you want. You know, whatever's fine for you. Okay, leave the needle in, turn it around. Remember to watch the guide. Um, and you can always use your backspace to get the needle in the position that you want. Now, I'm in the habit of always grabbing these stitches and I use thread, sorry, um, because I don't like them getting all jumbled up at the back. So that's just me. Okay. I'm going to do this last bit and try and match it up as closely. Use your backspace to get that needle in the same hole that you started with. And then do just a few more stitches along the first line that you did. I'll show you what I mean now. Just so that you don't have a second row. 
So there we go. That's what we've done there. We've we've sewn that onto a pocket and it looks lovely. I really like that. All right. So that's a lovely pocket. You can add add things to that. So you might want to add a little flower to the corner or you might want to add uh, a cut out um, flower or a die cut flower or butterfly or fussy cut flower the choices are yours or you might want to just use it like that you might want to stitch around the edge again or distress it but that's really a nice pocket that could go onto a page um anywhere you know just like that so there you go there's some straight stitching examples to do now the last item i want to show you as far as stitching is concerned is how to make a ruffle Okay, so we'll start simple, simple, and I'm going to, I keep a whole lot of these for, um, that I tear off and I've got a container there full of them. Um, keep all these narrow bits, um, they're great to do ruffles for. Now what you need to do is you need to pleat this. Now it's paper, it's, it's forgiving. So you, you take it like this and you're going to bend it like that and press it. Then you take the next piece and you're going to press it and you take it like that and you keep pressing it okay so it's much easier to do paper ruffles than it is fabric but practice with the paper ones first and then have a go with the fabric ones fabrics slip more slippery paper stays where you want it to go now i like to just tear off the end i don't want a straight across end I like it a bit rounded um, and usually up here as well um, so let's just take the edge off there all right so now everything is in place what you need to do is hold it and we're just going to do a straight stitch straight down the middle there so get a, the foot as a guide or find a guide spot put down the needle and then very slowly keep holding down each piece as you're doing it so double stitch at the end okay and look there we've got a little fab uh, paper ruffle just like that now you can distress that you can put a little cluster you can do that's really again a lovely decoration to put onto a page so practice some of those. Now I'm going to show you one step further with the ruffle and then that will be that for today. So what I suggest here is I've got um, a thinner piece of paper and I've got a thicker piece of paper. Which one? This one. Yeah. So what I want to do is you can, if you want, take your glue and run it on the thinner one just to keep it in place. Sometimes that's easier. Then you take the thinner one that's got a little bit of glue on and stick it in the middle of the wider one like that. Okay, that one needs a bit more glue there. There we go. So we've now got that in place. Now we're going to do the same thing. Make that slightly thicker or double the thickness now but it looks lovely with one in the middle and then again I'm going to just pull that away there okay so there we've got one like this so the same thing again run that through your machine needle up put it underneath the first one find your guide spot um, run the um, move the needle down and just hold each little pleat down now if you want to get wise and more decorative do a bit of the zigzag you don't have to use just straight stitch you can do a combination or just zigzag or just straight do the double stitch at the end I like to combine it because I like the look that you get with a little bit of a different stitch in the middle. So there's another idea.
beautiful ruffles. Those are paper ruffles. Those again make lovely um, decorative bits on on your stitching. Sorry. Okay, so I'm going to move this back. So close your eyes. <laughs> the sun's coming out, so I'll just go there. Um, I hope that's helped today. Um, so what I want you to do is try your stenciling. Um, try it on different things. You can do it on pages. You can do it on so many different things. You can do it on envelopes, and we're going to cover envelopes um, next time. So go and have a look at those. Um, try your stamping. Stamp on fabric. Stamp on your pages. You know, stamp um, wherever you can. Um, make full use of that. Use different colours. Um, the world's your oyster there. Just remember to use archival ink. And lastly, if you've got a machine or access to one or you want to get one that's secondhand or really basic, go for it. You really only need a straight stitch. I mean, even just a straight stitch is good enough. But usually they come with a zigzag as well, so that's even better. Have a go at it. Borrow somebody's if you've got access to it. You can pick up um, secondhand sewing machines really cheaply as well. So go and have a go. It gives such interesting um, characteristics to your journal making. And obviously you can fix your own clothes, hems and things, or, or things when they split. <laughs> There's that. All right, so I hope that's been really helpful today. Um, I know it wasn't that interesting, but I thought I'd cover those three areas because really this is geared for um, newbies. So we've all got to start somewhere and learn all of these things. I mean... It was a year ago that I started with journaling in March and well, a year and, and a month nearly um, and I knew nothing. So I'm trying to help you um, pick up a few tips at least um, and get you on the road to then try everything yourself. So I hope that you do. It's been lovely spending time with you guys again. Um, I look forward to our next project. Um, next week's going to be fun. I'm going to be, uh, I've already got a whole lot of things together here. I want to show you wallpapers. I want to talk about envelopes, book pages, all sorts of nice foldy things that we can do. Um, so please come and join me again for the next episode in the series. Have a lovely weekend and enjoy yourselves um, with the Easter holidays as best you can in these difficult times. And I'll see you all again very soon. Bye-bye.